We are now joined by Dr. Nancy Cantor, Chancellor of Rutgers University in Newark. And Dr. Cantor, good to talk with you. Wonderful to talk with you, Steve. And so we've talked to so many people in the higher ed community about the changing nature of higher education, online, in person, protecting students, faculty. If we can have time to get to that, we will. But with you, it seems to me your expertise, your focus, your commitment to racial and social justice is so strong. We're doing a series called Confronting Racism. In your view, as a social psychologist as well, what does it mean to, quote, confront racism? So I think what it means to confront racism is to really think about the decades, if not centuries, of the architecture of segregation that has so eroded opportunity for people of color, black, brown people, undocumented, all of our, of our groups who have really brought their talent to our communities, and yet we have not given them opportunity. And when you think about opportunity as a, as a Educator, I think about educational opportunity. Let's think about economic opportunity. It's jobs, it's housing. If we go back and think about the effects of redlining and housing right. policies and bank credit loans, we can't, we don't have intergenerational wealth happening in, in our communities. Look at the perseverance and the amazing strength of the residents of Newark over decades, over generations, over centuries. You've got a 350 plus year city with talent waiting to have opportunity. And you know we really don't take a racial equity lens unless we're forced to. Because? Why? Because we're scared? Because it's a zero sum game? or because we have learned over those centuries not to value black and brown bodies and not to value those families and not to think that they have the talent to make up our future. But you know, we have a reckoning. We have a reckoning in social justice. We have a reckoning from a business perspective. Who's the talent pool of the future? If you think about the exploding, wonderful diversity of our country, that's the talent pool of the future. And if they are behind walls that artificially restrain the cultivation of their talent, their ability to have wealth and security and safety in their community, the ability to get health care, the ability not to be taken down, by a pandemic, we we have a responsibility. We have a reckoning. No question about it. You know, Doctor Cantor, been long in the making, of course, right? But Nancy, we've known each other for a while, and you have been out front from day one. The question that keeps playing in my mind is: given what we all saw, the murder of George Floyd. Um, what does this window represent for us to actually do what, A, and B, who's gonna get left behind because they just don't get it or don't wanna get it? So I think the real question is, are we gonna use this as a moment to change our investment strategy? What do you mean change, investment strategy? To change who we invest in and how we give opportunity. It's all about opportunity. You give black and brown families opportunity, they will grab it. You give them loans, you give them housing stability, jobs. We invest in women and minority owned entrepreneurs in the city of Newark, it takes off. We invest in amazing students who we have to invest in because the world didn't invest in them financially, or in, they went to under-resourced schools, we invest in them and the, their voice, their talent, their ability to make an equitable society and a flourishing community just comes through. I mean, it's amazing. You know, people think it's rocket. They think, oh, this is gonna be so complicated. It's actually not very complicated. For example, in higher education, we have to stop having these narrow views of who deserves to be in universities. We have to look for talent 
capaciously. We have to be out there from K through 20, making the pathway work. We have to put our money where our mouth is. You know, I, I just really think this is a moment, a moment, but we've had moments before. So let's not- A moment let's like this, it. Dr. Cantor, sorry for interrupting. Have we ever had a moment like this? Have we ever had a moment like this? We've had centuries and decades. I mean, an opportunity there, like this is where uh, I mean, Dr. An Cantor. opportunity. An okay. opportunity to really do something. I don't mean just with lip service or right. photo ops or, I'm talking about real change. So I think this is a moment of real opportunity. I agree with you on that. And the reason I think that is my experience in Newark, New Jersey. We have a city where all the big anchors from the Prudentials of the world to NJ PAC to Rutgers Newark and NJIT and all the institutions have come together to make a commitment. Look at Audible, look at their commitments here. And I'm not pointing to just individual anchors. It's really cross sector. And what is really important is that those anchors are collaborating with the newer community development networks that's been here since the rebellion. Those of neighborhoods- 1967. Of 1967. Those neighborhood organizations are collaborating with large institutions, collaborating with resident groups, forming coalitions around public safety, community policing, forming coalitions around the Newark City of Learning Collaborative, right. thinking about how we really invest in the people of Newark. I'm Steve Adubato. That is Dr. Nancy Cantor. Boy, is she worth listening to. And we'll make sure you check us out next time. Take care. State of Affairs with Steve Adubato is a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding has been provided by the Fidelco Group. Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, Investors Bank, Gibbons PC, PSENG, The Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, New Jersey Sharing Network, The Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey, and by the Adler Aphasia Center. Promotional support provided by the New Jersey Business and Industry Association and by AM970 The Answer.